Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to configure EIGRP. Now we're going to cover what's required in order to get EIGRP up and running on your network. There are many optional commands with EIGRP and we cover a lot of those in dedicated tutorials. So here, just the required stuff, and then we'll also show you how to verify your configurations and also how to confirm that EIGRP is working how you want it to. Overall, this is going to sound very similar to OSPF, and in fact, it is very similar. So the commands are just slightly different, but the overall approach to enabling OSPF and EIGRP, they're very similar. So it's kind of easy to remember in that sense. We're going to go ahead and quickly cover the EIGRP process on the router, how to create it. And then we'll go ahead and enable it on the interfaces that we want to participate in EIGRP. After that, after it's up and running, we verify the status and we'll take a look at the routes that we learn from our neighbors. Here's a quick look at the lab setup. This is the same lab that we use for the OSPF tutorials. So we have routers A and B, a serial link connects them. Router B is already configured with EIGRP. So we'll be making our configurations on router A. And if we do it properly, EIGRP should come up and we should learn one route from router B. Okay, we'll begin by seeing if EIGRP is actually even running. The command I'll use is show IP EIGRP topology summary. And you can see we don't get any output back, so it's pretty safe to assume that it's not yet enabled on this router. You can try this with other show IP EIGRP commands when it's not yet enabled and you should get nothing back as well. It's just a good test before you begin. In configuration mode, in order to activate EIGRP, we issue the router EIGRP command and then the parameter has to be the autonomous system number, that AS number that we talked about. We have to choose wisely because this has to be the same number that is configured on the other routers that we want this router to talk to. Okay, So I happen to know that router B is using AS number 21. So that's the one I will use here. As soon as we enter that, we are put into EIGRP configuration mode. After that, we have to decide what interfaces we want EIGRP to run on. Our serial interface uses the 172.161.1 IP interface, and that's a slash 30. So a very similar command to the OSPF is the network command. And here, our first parameter has to be an IP address. And then we have two choices. First, we can enter a wildcard mask, which we did before, and that would be the end of the command. We could hit enter, or we don't have to enter a wildcard mask. However, if you choose not to, the IP uh, network number that you list has to be a classful network. Okay, So it kind of depends on what approach you want to take. If you enter the wildcard mask, then you're limiting the number of interfaces that will be um, that EIGRP will be applied to because we're narrowing the scope. If you don't use the wildcard mask and you use a classful network, just keep in mind if you have multiple interfaces that fall within that classful network range, all of them will be enabled with EIGRP. So I'm going to use the wildcard mask and those two commands are enough to enable EIGRP and to include at least in our case one interface uh, to to enable EIGRP on one interface. We can jump out of configuration mode now and let's go ahead and return to the first command we issued show IP EIGRP topology summary and now we actually get some useful information. We can see at the top here the configured AS number is 21 and right after that, we learn the EIGRP router ID for this router. We also learn how many routes we're learning from EIGRP and how many interfaces and how many neighbors are present on those interfaces. So you can see we have one interface with one neighbor and it lists the interface for us. This is a really helpful command to quickly get an idea of how EIGRP is operating on the router. We can also issue the show IP EIGRP 
Interfaces command. And here we're going to get specific information for each interface that is enabled. Again, we're told the process ID, which is 21, in other words, the AS number. And here you can see we have serial 000 listed. And what's really interesting, it'll tell us how many peers we have uh, learned about on that particular interface. By peer, they do mean neighbor. They're just calling it a different name. OK? Finally, let's take a closer look at our neighbors. So show IP, EIGRP, neighbors. And you can see we have one listed. We learn the interface IP address of our neighbor, 1.2, which is router B. And we learn the interface on our router uh, that we learned about this neighbor on. So obviously serial 000 on router A is connected to router B. And so here is the IP address of router B. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual routing information that we're learning from router B. We can start off with the show IP route command, which will tell us the entire IP route table. And here you can see at the bottom, right above the static route, 192.168.2.0, it's a slash 24. I immediately know that route is from EIGRP because of the letter D in the front. If we look up at the key, we can see D indicates EIGRP. We can also limit our IP route view by just putting EIGRP at the end, and then it will only tell us the routes that we've learned through EIGRP. So if you remember, we did the same thing in OSPF, show IP route OSPF. Here we're just putting this protocol at the end. Okay, so that's how we can verify not only that EIGRP is up and functioning, which interfaces it's running on, what neighbors have we met, but also what routes we're learning from those neighbors. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We have some new configuration commands, but they're very similar, if not exactly the same, to what we already learned in OSPF. So hopefully this makes it easier to remember. We enable EIGRP with the router EIGRP command, and the key here is using the correct AS number. So this fits into your overall planning on your network. Every router that you want this router to talk to has to have the same AS number. Now we can designate which interfaces will run EIGRP with the network command, and this is the same network command we used in OSPF. And here we have a choice of using the wildcard mask to limit the range or we don't have to use the wildcard mask, but keep in mind the requirement there is that IP address has to be a classful network number. Now we can verify EIGRP with these commands, the EIGRP topology, and play around with that command. There are some parameters after that, like the AS number or summary. We can learn different views on your EIGRP information. You can learn more about specific neighbors by using the neighbor parameter. And then finally, some additional information about the interfaces running EIGRP. Finally, we can take a look at the routes we learned, and we can see the entire route table. Remember, EIGRP routes are designated with the letter D. And if your route table is really big, you can shrink the number of routes to only display the EIGRP routes by including that parameter at the end of the show IP route command. Okay, so that's it. Those are the required configurations in order to get EIGRP up and running, and then a few additional commands to verify its functionality and the configurations. Thanks for watching.